I am angry. I'm angry. I'm angry at people angry too. who think they have rights to think. You do not have the right to slave you have, labor. You have, and when you claim you have oh the right, gosh, when you claim you have the right to housing. That is awesome! When you, you claim you have yourself. the right to housing, yes. to health care, to wages, you don't! You don't! Work for it. You don't work, work for it! Really? I don't. Away. How do you know me? You How do you know me? That's very no, rude and very away. vulgar. You, you walk away. That is no, awesome. Walk away. Why should I walk away? Why should we walk away? Well, you let him yell at me. Leave me the fuck alone. Why are you guys yelling? I don't know. We're drinking with a bunch of them in there at the tavern. <laughs> That's that your the prerogative. Project exactly. been hanging out yours with some of these hockey players. Like you're yelling at There's no need to yell. Do you know we agree with 60% of what they're yes. mad about? You, you're right. We do have. We agree about crony capitalism. It, end, it ends there, though. It no, ends there. <laughs> we, we agree with a lot. Tea partiers agree with a lot. Well, I'll tell you what. Why don't you come in with me and sit down and have a drink with us, and you'll find out. We got Jim Gilchrist of the Minuteman Project. We've got the head of TeaParty.org. We've got a bunch of Tea Party and Minutemen sitting with occupiers, and we haven't had an argument. Three hours. Three hours. Come with us. Hey. Hey, we're gonna bring him over. Cool. Let's go. All right, come on. No one. Let's go. We're going back to the beer summit. Come on. I mean, like I said, we don't agree a hundred percent, but right? we agree on on a lot of the stuff. But we have civil discourse. This fighting, no. If you're recording, you probably don't want to record this. Okay. This fighting is caused mostly by these guys, uh, not you necessarily. You mean the press? Yes. There wasn't much press. Everyone has a cell phone though. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, anybody with an iPhone has live stream now. Look, we protect your rights to protest, and when it's our turn, we have our rights. Yeah, no, we, I agree. I wholeheartedly agree. There should be not a single person in this, in this nation that silences us. Yeah. I can't no tell way. you how many times we were hassled when we went to protest. Oh, I believe it. Dude, I can't tell you how don't many times like we've it. been hassled. <laughs> we don't like it. What are they so afraid we're going to say? I don't know, man. Maybe they're afraid we're going to get along. Well, yeah. <laughs> Actually, uh, my buddy, I was just talking. Are you recording? Yeah. Okay. Talk about it. Everything is on record. Huh? Everything is on the record. Eh. Secrets make, secrets don't make friends, but secret makes, secrets make allies. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> you understand later. Okay. <laughs> you understand that? Oh, we don't Ladies and gentlemen, this is the reporter for the Hey, how are you, sir? Welcome, brother. James. Please, this is the most important thing happening. This is the most important thing happening at this conference tonight. Why? Because you have a table of. Tea Partiers, Republicans, and occupiers who have been here for a few hours um, in solidarity, finding things that we can have in common, and becoming really close. I love these guys. Now, which are you, a Tea Party or an occupier? Kind of obvious, I'm an occupier. Anyway, I hear what you're saying. I, it's, you know, again, I will retract my statement and fervently disagree with everything you said. <laughs> so what did you learn? I think what we learned was that it's possible to have civil discourse and a civil debate with people without yelling and screaming. And, and then a lot of what we talk about is are things that we all agree on. What do you all agree on? Uh, the corrupting influence of money in politics, uh, the, the, the damage being done by uh, the stagnation in Congress. Uh, I mean, many of these things are Tea Party ideals as well as Occupy ideals. Where we differ is the solutions to those problems. And that's what we kind of have been going over today. Well, what, what, is, what do you think they're saying? As far as solutions? Uh, free market. <laughs> Uh, you know, reducing reducing the size of government, 
Glass-Steagall. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, what we want is, is to reinstitute Glass-Steagall. And, and, yeah, and, and we had actually uh, David uh, Bossy here walk through the area. Didn't really engage us too much, but he was going to do something with a, a con one of the conference meetings. So, um, yeah, I mean, where we differ is, is the solution. I mean, what they want is less government and, and uh, free markets, and where, where we think some of us think it, the solutions lie in, um, in uh, you know, reorganizing the way the government actually functions, so reducing the amount of earmarking or, or completely banning it, um, so that legislations are clear, concise, and um, they have a sense of continuity. But there's not some kind of um, disjointed statement attached to the end of an uh, appropriations bill like NDAA. Here's an occupier who's a union member. Have you talked to him yet? No, no. Here. No, no, I'm all right. I'm okay. I'm all right. Tell him how we've been getting along. I don't usually talk to the press. Well, neither do I. Um, I, I remember what Bill Sherman said. He said, if I killed all the reporters, there'll be news from hell before breakfast. It's much different than uh, what I learned about Bill Rogers. And the treatment report is something well and often. You didn't get that on record, did you? <laughs> yeah, just because you're a hypocrite doesn't mean you're wrong, it just means you're guilty too. This is Steve Eichler. Pleased to meet you. How you doing? This is Dale. How you doing? Dale Robertson. He started the minute of the uh, Tea Party movement. Here, why don't you, why don't you switch places with me? Oh, they're good guys. Are they? Well, they're here earlier. They'll be back there out smoking. There's a lot of common uh, ground that you can see. Um, I think crony capitalism probably addresses a lot of the problems that we have. So, crony capitalism is like Slendra. Slendra, but you know, both the left and right. Um, does their part as far as who's the winning, who's the winners, and who's the losers. So the Tea Party has always had a principle of nonpartisan. So we should hold both the Democrats and Republicans accountable. And uh, I think the occupiers are really feeling the the crunch economically. So you know when you hear the numbers in the media that jobs are looking better, well, you got the occupiers out there saying it's not looking better. Now, Dale, where you're from in Laguna Woods, California, are there many occupiers to you? Uh, there's a, a few uh, that we've had in California, uh, very peaceful in our area, uh, but uh, our headquarters is in Laguna, but I'm actually from Texas, so, and we don't have too many down in Texas, so just, I don't know, because there's a, a probably a large conservative population, but uh, it's great to see these guys face to face, because it's kind of, you, can, you can't really hate somebody when you know somebody, you know, and so I think they were quite surprised who we are and what we stand for that there's some common grounds that we can work together. Uh, but you know what? It's great when you sit down and have a few pints and uh, realizing that, you know, this is a, a fellow American that loves life and liberty and freedom. And it would be great if we can get the government to actually listen to us instead of uh, pitting one American against another. Now you're, you're well known for having a political career, right? I ran for Congress, but uh, uh, did not succeed in the election, but I haven't run it again. So what about the occupiers? How did that work out? Why did you decide to go out and bring them in? Well, I felt that they had grievances similar to all Americans. Uh, you don't have to be a Republican or a Democrat or an Independent or an Anarchist or whatever uh, the political uh, associations are to be unhappy with your government. And there's that common thread that seems to uh, 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 
uh, spread across all parties and uh, all of our, our uh, all of our citizens. But there is this common frustration between, I'd say, the middle class, the lower class, the upper class in America, common frustration with the way our government handles all of us. And everyone is pointing the finger at Washington. It's, it doesn't seem to be the states, in my opinion, that's the problem. It's a centralized federal government that seems to be bullying the 50 states. There is, I think that's you know, a reality one of the problem major that problems that a lot of people with the Occupy movement have a problem with is the way our elections are run. We see so much influence of money in politics. And that's like our problem isn't that you have money, it's that you're using yeah, well, like, you know, not you, but it's that people are using that money to gain influence and change the rules in their favor. And one, and one of the results of that is that social mobility, where which is one of the which was one of the great you know the American dream being able to you know coming up from being a from a poor family and rise to riches. And the, I think the problem that a lot of people have is that that, that actually has decreased. Like social mobility in the United States has decreased. Even Europe, which was historically socially stagnant with you know your aristocratic classes and everything. It has more social mobility now than us, and that's a big problem. Bottom line, what is the problem with the 1%? From my opinion, 1% represents those that have achieved the American dream and become successful. And I was, I mean, I was up for my entire life. You if you wanted to say CPAC equals slavery, then you would say CPAC equals slavery. There, there are racists in all of the political... But, man, when I showed up to this protest, I was not here to call you racist, and I didn't know that sign would be here. Just like there are CPAC people who yell things at me, and I'm not judging you based on that. I'm not judging you based on what other CPAC. It, well, racist homophobe. So, then you guys are being very um, judgmental of us. You're judging us on something that's not true and not accurate. Not true of all of you, but many of the conservative people I know, as I said, have issues with minority cultures within this country, and so that's what I'm battling. Because while you have a viewpoint that I can agree with, I don't think everybody in that meeting has that viewpoint. And what I am here to say is that I am against the viewpoint that minority cultures should assimilate entirely, not be able to retain their culture within the United States. I've never heard anybody and, say that they shouldn't. And but you know what? Then you deal with them as individuals. I live for America, I work for America, and I love this country, and I can't stand socialism. I can't stand communism. The only good communist is a dead communist. Hold your, hold your, hold your.